My Lionel MPC Southern Crescent. Repaired, restored, and ready to roll on this episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks, and this is my Lionel MPC Southern Crescent Limited passenger set from 1977 and 1978. Since taking over Lionel train production in 1970, MPC had offered a number of steam-powered passenger sets. These sets, such as the Milwaukee Special, the Broadway Limited, and the Capital Limited, had been offered as starter sets, including track and transform. These sets featured newly tooled 027 heavyweight passenger cars, the so-called Baby Madison cars, and were powered by versions of Lionel's tried-and-true 442 steam locomotive. When Lionel released the Amtrak Lakeshore Limited set in 1976, it replaced these steam-powered passenger sets with an Alco FA and reissued streamlined passenger cars. It made little sense for Lionel to offer another 027 passenger starter set alongside the diesel, so the question became what to do with the new heavyweight car tooling. In 1977, Lionel had their answer. While the Lakeshore returned in the 027 starter set slot, MPC tried a new approach with the heavyweight cars. Instead of a starter set, they decided instead to target a more advanced hobbyist and collectors with a new train led by a larger steamer. Based on the post-war number 2046-464 Hudson, the locomotive and five passenger cars would all be available for separate purchase without track or transformer. But what railroad would this new set represent? MPC chose Southern's Crescent Limited as the basis for this new passenger set. In addition to the train's stunning color scheme, there were several other good reasons to select this train in 1977. Among the railroads that declined to join Amtrak in 1971 was the Southern Railway, and Southern's Crescent Limited was one of the few deluxe trains still running independently on American railroads in 1977. While the Southern train appealed to an underrepresented geographic area in the Lionel Line, you know, the southeastern U.S., the Crescent also had connections in Washington, D.C. and New York, so there was still some appeal in the East Coast major markets as well. Also, the former Southern Steam Locomotive number 4501 had been a frequent star of mainline excursion trains throughout the 1970s, and so there was an existing familiarity with Southern steam locomotives among the public. The locomotive featured a die-cast boiler, smoke, magnet traction, which was somewhat of a rarity in MPC production, and MPC's electronic mighty sound of steam. All cars featured interior illumination and operating couplers. My set arrived as a Christmas gift in 1978, and it was run often, long, and hard over the years, even suffering a handful of falls off the train table. Other derailments claimed coupler knuckles, and time and frequent use led to the demise of each and every light bulb on the train, from the locomotive headlight to every single bulb in every passenger car, and even wore out some of the pickup rollers. About a decade ago, the locomotive developed a sudden and mysterious short circuit. I disassembled the engine looking for the reason, but then life intervened. First was a new need to redesign my existing layout to better serve my kids, and that was followed by several housing relocations, and that meant that the pieces of the disassembled engine sat in a plastic box, patiently waiting repair for many years. Until now. With a little unexpected time on my hands due to rainy weather, I finally opened up the box to inspect and repair the locomotive. While I had everything apart, I went ahead and replaced the motor brushes and cleaned the motor commutator and gave everything a proper lubrication. I also found a surprise. For a short time in the 1970s, my father and I decided that steel wool was an effective tool for track cleaning. Bad idea. This was my only magnet traction locomotive, so it had the honor of picking up all of the little bits of steel wool that had fallen between the rails. 
The wheel axles were coated in a cloud of metal shavings. Uh, the most time-consuming part of this servicing was using so long, thin pliers at cotton swabs to remove the metal shavings from all the places where they didn't belong. Lesson learned, no steel wool. Through trial and error, I determined that the short circuit is somewhere in the reverse unit. I've cleaned the unit multiple times, but so far I've been unsuccessful in locating the exact culprit. So in the meantime, I bypassed the reverse unit and wired the engine for forward only operation. After all, it's a passenger train, and I don't envision doing a whole lot of switching with it. I replaced the headlight with a donor bulb from another locomotive that I had previously converted to LEDs. I thought it would be easier in this case to keep the standard lamp rather than to create a new mount for the headlight. The boiler front had suffered damage from a number of accidents over the years, and so I replaced this as well as the green marker jewels with new parts from the train tender. By the way, now that it's been 40 to 80 years in many cases since these trains were produced, replacement parts for post-war and MPC trains are becoming increasingly difficult to find. That might be one reason why Lionel pulled its MPC parts diagrams off of its webpage last year. Perhaps too many people were contacting them for parts that are simply no longer available. The paint had also suffered from years of use and abuse, especially on the back side of the cab. This touch-up pin from Hobby Lobby is a pretty close match and makes these blemishes a bit more difficult to see. The rear truck on the tender was damaged some 35 years ago or so from a fall from the train table, and I had glued the truck back together numerous times over the years, but I finally decided just to replace the entire truck with a spare from a scrap caboose. You can tell this is not original as the tender now has an operating coupler instead of the original dummy coupler. Several of the cars had busted coupler knuckles and worn pickup rollers, which I replaced using the same methods I had demonstrated in a previous video. There is a link to that video in the description and at the end of this video. I already replaced the lighting in some of the cars with LED tape lights and an anti-flicker circuit that I described also in a previous video. And again, there is a link to that video and description in the end of this video. Lacking enough capacitors to do the remaining cars, I instead replaced the bulbs in these cars with these soft white LEDs from Amazon. While I like the anti-flicker attributes of the other replacements, I find that the light from the LED tapes is really a bit too harsh. I will probably replace the lighting in these cars with these uh, soft white bulbs at some point. Although these are slightly more expensive than the tape light system. So here's the finished and nearly complete train. A matching number 19001 dining car was produced in 1987 for this set, uh, but I have yet to find one available for a price that I am willing to pay. Um, on my train, you will also notice two head-in cars. One is a generic Railway Express Agency car from Menards, and the second is a Crescent Limited REA made by Hayline in the 1990s. My Southern Crescent Limited is again ready to take its place as the flagship passenger train on my layout. For MPC, the Southern Crescent was an obvious sales success, as it returned in the catalog in 1978, along with the classic Blue Comet, now featuring six-wheel trucks on the passenger cars. The Blue Comet returned in 1979, to be followed in 1980 by the Chessy Steam Special this time led by MPC's first reissue of the classic Lionel 284 Berkshire locomotive and a new electronic whistle. The series of Baby Madison sets wrapped up in 1981 with the stunning red Chicago and Alton Limited set. These post-war inspired colorful sets are just as desirable with operators and collectors today as they were five decades ago and I expect that my set will still be running five decades from now. Until then, the colors of lights, the smell of the smoke, and the sound of the mighty electronic sound of steam will once again grease my railroad and 
stir up memories of layouts long ago. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and if so, please let your friends and neighbors, and especially YouTube, know by liking it, sharing, subscribing, or commenting. And don't forget to check the video description for links to products and videos that I mentioned in this episode. So, keep those strings running, and we'll catch you next time on Toy Train Tips and Tricks.